Hey, what's up? I'm David Longoria. I'm here with the the uh, amazing, legendary musician, Mr. Stanley Clark. Welcome to the show. All right, man. How you doing? Good, good to, good see, to you. see you. Yeah. It's not an overstatement to say Stanley Clark, a legendary musician. You know, those of us who grew up listening to you, and uh, you've had a lot of impact on my music, on, on a lot of other artists. Who are some of the people that maybe influenced your playing? It was the older jazz musicians, like obviously Miles Davis. John Coltrane, Duke Ellington, you know, those types. Those guys, those kind of musicians are, you know, they were guys that had dreams and they were very, like, on a track. It's difficult to stay on the path because it's very tempestuous being an artist. And it also can be confusing, like, am I going out here to make money? Am I going out to try to, you know, have my art be the best that it can be? It's like whatever it is that you do, how you do it, make it the best. So some guys, when they're very young, they have a, a sense of who they are. Yeah. And then some guys, they're searching and they don't find it or never find it. I do I do know if you keep that in mind and, and all the other things should be byproducts like uh -huh. fame and fortune. And they'll come if you stay true to what, because all the great artists, uh, yeah. very distinctive, right. distinctive characters, you know. Right. Awesome. Well, now, uh, when you mentioned some of the great musicians you listened to that were influences, you didn't mention any bass players. And uh, well, a guy, a guy that was very influential on me was Charlie Mingus. Oh yeah. Charlie Mingus could have been anything. He, he was a revolutionary character. Well, I remember I had a couple meals with him, and I, you know, I could have been talking to a general from an army or something. Yeah. Just very, you know, commanding individual. Very. Uh, uh, re, re, you know, re, very anti-establishment type of a person, great musician, band leader, you know, and I just thought, wow, this guy, he's a bass player and he's, he seems like he can do whatever he wants, you know. Yeah. I and like that. I, but that's really interesting because a lot, of ba a lot of kids growing up learning the bass are kind of thinking, well, I'm going to play the root and that's all there is to it. Yeah. But anybody who studies your playing knows that you're quite a technician and you're meticulous. I mean, you right. lay it down. I'm a trumpet player, so I'm looking to that bass to know where my melody is going to fit. I, I got to lay back, but if yeah. he's not driving, I can't lay back. You know? Yeah, yeah. well, you know, to be a bass player nowadays, it isn't uh, anymore a real monolithic kind of a role now. You, but the traditions of the bass player have to be there. In order to yeah. be a good bass player, you still got to be able to lay it down. You have to understand chords, mm -hmm. you have to understand rhythm. You, you have to really be a full musician now. Yeah. I, I actually think that's true on any instrument today. Yeah. It's a good thing though. Yeah, you, you, you got to have all the stuff. The better players nowadays are guys that have everything. Yeah. They yeah. bring a lot more to the table. Yeah. Do you feel as a musician that uh, be, listening to saxophone players, trumpet players, pianists, those kind of things, they all contribute to your own melodic, uh, your yeah. sense of melody? You know, you got to have some sort of sense of music because you've studied it, you've stu studied written here, notes, here, yeah. or it's just natural. Well, I think that uh, also what's interesting about your career is that you've been through several different periods in music where um, in, at your young age, you're still doing uh, innovative things. It's not dated. I don't feel like I'm listening to somebody who played in 1968 and isn't right. vital now. Well, I'm always moving forward. I, I like to, uh, you know, I love that. I love to move forward and challenge myself. I think when you stop challenging yourself, you know, you're going to pretty much stay where you are. So what's on the horizon for Stanley Clark? Well, I got a new record that just came out. Uh, and um, What's the name of it? It's called The Stanley Clark Band. I'm also working on a, a play for Broadway, a musical that I've been working on for three years with a, a woman named Pamela Edwards. That um, uh, It's a really nice play. And uh, we're going to do a, probably a short run 
in one of the cities here. It's exciting for me as a musician to see kids that are coming to my shows who would also go to a rock concert, they'd go to hear a Latin group, they'd hear you know a bossa nova group. You know, there's a more of an access to music and uh, one kid can hold more music. Mm -hmm. I mean like you know my daughter said she had on her iPod she had like 4,000 songs or something and I was imagining walking around with 4,000 what, what records. What is in there? <laughs> <laughs> you got all these yeah, records carrying them. Exactly. You know I mean I, li I think the kids nowadays listen to more music than I ever did yeah. when I was young. Well, it was not physically possible to put it that many records on. <laughs> to have that many records going. Yeah. I mean, you know. Funny, funny. So uh, it's very interesting now. Technology has really, really shaped just the whole music culture, you know. Yeah. And, and how people, their perceptions of music. Yes. Very interesting. Well now, uh, you've always incorporated uh, not only jazz, but funk and rock and uh, R&B, of course. Yeah, yeah. And uh, are, are those, uh, do you feel like those things are all growing as well? You know, it's funny, it's, a, it's an interesting question, you know, when, you, you know, at different points in my life, someone will always say, well, where's the music going, you know, and, yeah. and I always have the same Ask answer, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't Absolutely. just go on its own. Right. It's really up to the mus musicians and... And as long as society keeps producing, as long as society is in a state where artists can grow, music and art will always go forward. But if for some reason society gets to a point where that's not possible, then the music will stagnate. People have to be innovators. You've got to have a new Dizzy Gillespie or somebody yeah. adding something to it. And they're all out there. It's yeah. a, you know, the jazz is still in the school system pretty good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Stanley. Okay, man. Have fun and I'll talk to you. Definitely.